Now we're going to talk about quantifiers that act as determiners. So words like no and every, as in every kid fell and no dog barked. So inside our determiner phrase, so we're now going to use DPs, every is going to act as a determiner and kid is going to be the noun. No will be the determiner and dog will be the noun and that will form the noun phrase. So what are we going to do in this sentence? Well, let's start with every kid fell and let's think about our predicate logic translation so we can motivate what we're going to do with every. So first of all, if we're going to translate this, we're going to say something like for all X, if X is a kid, then X fell. So this is going to be our base. But what are we going to do if we just have the word every? Like what does every want in this case? Well, every has this all X flavor to it. In fact, I'm going to make a little bit more space here. It has this all X flavor and we're expecting a couple things. So one, we're expecting some sort of predicate. So we're expecting some sort of predicate like PX. Uh, and then it's going to be sent to some other predicate, which would be QX. But the important part here, of course, is that there's some binding happening. So for all X, if PX, then QX. But we don't know what P and Q are at that point. So we're going to suggest here that we can do some lambdas here. So lambda P, lambda Q for all X, if PX, then QX. And this is going to be the designation for every. In other words, what type is this thing going to be? Well, we're actually going to take a look at the diagram to figure out the type, but let's just do no dog barked. So if we do no dog barked, what is our translation going to be? It's going to be there does not exist an X. So this is one way we could do it. There does not exist an X such that X is a dog and X barked. So this is one way of doing it. Alternatively, we could also say for all X, if X is a dog, then it is not the case that X barked. So we have a choice for which one we want to do. I'm going to do the top one uh, just because it's a little bit nicer. And that way we have some variety in the trees that we do. So in terms of no, what will we be doing here? We'd be saying that this is there does not exist an X. We'd be looking for some predicate and some other predicates. So what we would do is we would abstract. We would have lambda P, lambda Q, and then P and Q would be the predicates that we're searching for. In this case, it would be dog and then barked. So let's take a look at some types here. Let's just fill in what we know in terms of meaning. So if you remember, common nouns act as sets before. So this would be something like lambda x dot x is a kid in terms of function notation. Fell would be lambda x dot x fell. And these are going to propagate up the trees. So we know what types these are. These are et and et. So we can just label these all going up. We know that the sentence should be a truth value. So what are we going to do for our dp here? OK, well, what we're going to do is we don't have an entity here. It is not just Trevor Fell. It is a quantified noun phrase. So it's going to have a very similar type to what our quantified pronouns have at this point. So it is going to be an ETT. Now, how do we get an ETT out of a determiner which has no type yet and an ET? Well, we have to do something a little bit complicated. You see, every is acting as our main function here. It's going to take the kid. So the first thing it needs to take is an ET. And what it needs to pop out is an ETT. So that's a little bit confusing. But if we take a look at our translation for every, we can see how that looks. So this will be lambda p lambda q dot uh, for all x if px then qx. So this is what it's going to look like. And basically what we have here is we have our et, we have our et, and then our final output is going to be a truth value. So let's propagate this up the tree. So I'm going to just copy and paste uh, some of this up here. I'll try to get rid of the ets. Kid will pop up. And then XFEL will pop that up as well. So now what's going to happen when we get to the DP here? So we're going to be plugging lambda X dot X as a kid into our uh, formula for our determiner. So I'm not going to show the full step, but I am going to show the second step. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to insert it into this position. I'm inserting this statement into this position and I'm getting rid of my lambda P. So what that's going to look like in our result is lambda Q for all x if 
lambda x dot x is a kid, and that will go with that other x just to reduce to x as a kid. So I'm going to use like a hybrid of logic and text. So if x is a kid, then qx. And we're gonna fill in qx after. So we're just looking for one more thing. We're looking for a function to replace with q, and we have just that function with fell. So over on the right here, we're going to take lambda x dot x fell, and we're going to be substituting it in for q because that's the next thing in our list. So when we do that, we are going to get that this is true if and only if for all x, and we can say for all x in the domain of entities, um, if x is a kid, then x fell. And that would be our final result for this sentence. So it's nothing really too complicated here. I think a lot of the difficulty when it comes to these initial quantifiers is how do we motivate these types and where is all of this coming from? So I hope on that first slide where we started with a predicate logic translation and worked backwards can help you see some more insight here. So let's take a look at no dog bark and let's just do this very quickly. So uh, dog is going to be lambda x dot x is a dog. Uh, barked is going to be lambda x dot x barked. So I don't want to do that all the way down. And then what is no going to be? Well, when we say no dog barked, we want there does not exist an x such that px and qx, we're going to get dog x and barked x in the end, but we need to search for our lambda p and our lambda q. So that's what that's going to look like. That will go up the tree. We'll do some substitution. So our first substitution, we're putting x as a dog into p. So we're going to end up with just lambda q dot, uh, let's try it another way. So let's do it this way too dog x and qx. Why not? We can turn it into regular writing after. And now on our next line, we're going to be putting in, sorry, that's not completely right. I should get the quantifier in there. I'm getting very happy just to not have to write too much. Okay. And then when we put our new function in lambda x dot x barked into our determiner phrase, what are we going to get? This is going to be true if and only if there does not exist an x such that dog x and barked x. And what we can do is we can turn this into the language of words. So one if uh, for no x in our domain of entities, x is a dog and x barked. So that's the same thing, but now we've written in words, which make which may make some linguists happier than others. But that's how we work with quantifiers. So if you have any questions, you can leave them down below, but hopefully it's not too bad.